progressively load these implants and be really comfortable with their integration status before we move forward. Next case is going to look at uh, a real old example of, of ceramic abutments. Uh, and this case goes back quite some time. Uh, challenging case of root resorption where we've lost some of the attachment on the lateral incisor. Uh, unfortunately, we get this case after extraction. So we, we get a case at this standpoint where we've lost all papilla. Uh, and this patient has made it very clear that she will do whatever it takes. She'll spend as long as she needs to get the optimal outcome. So we'll do some things in this case that I would not say are highly predictable or routine. But it's a good example of me being very lucky. Uh, as we transition through this case. So we had to go back, and this does date the case, because I don't use much GTAM anymore, but this is a, a ridge augmentation procedure using Gore-Tex membrane and autogenous bone. Here's moving right to stage two therapy, uh, working hand in hand with a prosthodontist that's right there and has their lab. So we'll see an impression coping and take an index um, where we're using a rigid surgical guide to lute with Dural-A the impression coping to the guide. She goes back to the lab while I'm working on a connective tissue graft and starts to create the provisional restoration uh, that is delivered that same day. So here's our pressed ceramic, the old style ceramic abutment or first generation ceramic abutment and provisional restoration. Our connective tissue grafting uh, and these procedures that follow just could not be done without a provisional restoration. So we'll, we'll let it heal a little bit, but we're still quite deficient on the papilla, uh, but we have the ability to take this provisional off and work in approximately, uh, have the access to, to move tissue around. Um, we're just still deficient. It's hard to see on this picture, but there's, there's still significant gaps in approximately. And this is where, uh, you know, what I'm going to show you next is not something that's routine. Uh, papilla reconstruction, kind of using the uh, the technique of a uh, palatal roll technique, but not for a ridge augmentation, for papillary augmentation. So a papilla reconstruction, reconstruction where we're just moving connective tissue from the palate into the improximal zone, putting our provisional restoration back on, and we just were fortunate in this case to gain some papilla height. Now we're moving forward to final soft tissue recontouring. Uh, Today, I would use probably a laser to recontour the tissue. Uh, in this case, I'm using a large diamond burr to recontour our soft tissues. Here are, here's our final restoration shortly after insertion. Uh, and the benefits of, of cases like this are that even though it's not perfect, uh, it's, it's a pretty favorable change from where we started. And it's one of those cases that really gets better with time. Uh, and somewhat violates what we've been taught about the position of inter interproximal bone. As you'll see here on, an interpro on a seven-year x-ray, we've got maintenance of bone to the first thread on the mesial, but not the distal. The distal's uh, just beyond the first thread. And because of our contact position, I'm not sh so sure how well that shows up on your view, but we've moved that contact position apically to help us maintain the tissues uh, that, that are, that are good for this patient. She's, she's certainly a happy uh, long-term long -term result there. And here, another case where we have a hard and soft tissue deficiency. Uh, I was not involved in the implant therapy, just in the provisional stage of this case. So the implant was placed prior to me becoming involved. Uh, we can see that we have uh, good hard tissue three-dimensionally here uh, for the implant surgeon, uh, but a significant soft tissue deficiency that we need to mask with a soft tissue graft. In profile, significant ridge deficiency here. Here's the index. This, so now this here's where I'm coming into uh, helping with the case. Index is used to prepare our provisional restoration. So we not only need to get a tooth in here, but we've got to recoup this. And you can see after provisional and buccal connective tissue grafting, we've reestablished that facial tissue. Here you can see it in um, just showing that it's a cement retained provisional restoration that's quite durable. In these folks that have heavy occlusal wear, uh, I, I like to go to a, a screw retained, more durable restoration. Save us time in the repair phase of fractures and just a really nice result of how we've used the provisional still to, to reestablish that facial gingival margin and facial soft tissue profile. This patient moved on to the, 
uh, I guess I would call the second generation ceramic abutments or the zir first zirconium abutment. Uh, there's a real post um, and most of the restorative docks will, will put these in with temporary cement. Uh, in this case, it was nice for me because it came off at about three years and I get a good chance to, to, to really assess the soft tissue profiles developed with the final restoration. Um, you can see that we did some root, we subsequently did some root covered uh, on this tooth to even the gingival margins. Um, and my only criticism here is that, you know, today um, we do everything we can to move this implant more coronally. Uh, if you remember the initial PA, uh, we had facial bone up here. So we placed this implant rather deep and over time uh, we've got a, we've got a, you know, a kind of a violation of crown to root ratio, uh, but with a long term um, functional outcome here, we, we feel we're safe. And I've just got a few more minutes, and if, if it's okay, uh, Harold, because we start about five minutes late, we'll press on for an extra five. This case uh, has a really interesting history and documentation. In 96, the patient fell off a horse, and no fracture was visualized, but as we go through to 2001, even going through orthodontic therapy in this time period, we start to see the fracture on the root, uh, and it was bonded the, the day of the, the incident. The, the coronal, at, coronal fracture was bonded uh, and we were just going to, the restorative doctor was going to um, watch it closely. This was when I became involved in, in 2002. We've got a young lady uh, pressing to get off to college uh, we, and her parents have emphasized that they want to do things as quick as possible. So with the three-dimensional analysis, cross-sectional view, I uh, want to point out that we've, because of that com cosmetic bonding, we've already got a pre-plan for the fact that this is over-contoured and if we're going to end up with a, the state, the straight emergence of the natural tooth, then we've got to do one of two things, change the shape of the natural tooth or rebuild some soft tissues in approximately on the distal of the proposed implant. Using some model surgery to give me the ability to create a provisional restoration for the time of implant placement and provisionalization. Here we're removing our tooth, uh, pretty dramatic fracture there that we now can see uh, full right. Here's a provisional uh, left out of occlusion, uh, not the most pretty provisional restoration, but it's going to do, do our job for us in the first weeks of healing. Here we can see at one week we've got good healthy tissue. I've left the interproximal zones open, and then at about six to eight weeks we've come back and made an, a new provisional uh, that's highly polished and well contoured and more aesthetic for this young lady. Here we can see the, the ability to really create a nice marginal integrity of our provisional onto the abutment. Uh, and this has worked with the tissue for another six to eight weeks. Uh, in this case, we went towards a final restoration more early than I would have ordinarily been comfortable with, uh, but we're going to plan to leave some, some space there for papillas to fill over time. So same process that you've seen before, creating the customized impression coping, first relining the temporary that's been kind of beat up and creating the, the, the best marginal adaptation we can. Uh, to create a customized impression coping. And again, same process, the abutment that's in the mouth, the provisional that's in the mouth, and then using this same protocol to make a customized impression coping and final impression. Here we're just taking shades here and using the technology at the other end of it to custom mill a Procera abutment. And here, early on in the stage, we've still got some papilla to fill, uh, but with time, because of our planning and, and appropriate placement, uh, we're going we're gonna to feel confident and comfortable that this is going to fill uh, as it is at this stage and this stage. Nice soft tissue health around the implant supported restoration, uh, and she continues to, over the years, has continued to look really better and better with time. Highly scalloped periodontium. Uh, so we're, we're happy that we could preserve that tissue in one of a, kind of a more challenging case. Uh, nice maintenance of, of bone around our fixture. <clears throat> now kind of jumping ahead to two cases and th then I will be done in a, another few minutes uh, of kind of just different philosophies here of taking out a tooth and placing an immediate implant. There's the horizontal fracture of our central. 
uh, a traumatic uh, extraction as, as much as possible, verifying that we've got the platform three millimeters apical to the facial gingival margin, our indexing. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to deliver the, the, the ovate ponic removable and go back to the laboratory. So this is one week uh, after implant placement. Go back to the laboratory and, and create the final abutment with a provisional restoration. So we're gonna come back and at stage two, deliver a zirconium abutment with a provisional restoration and see how we can do as far as maintaining tissues. You saw that the healing abutment had exposed itself, so we have a relatively straightforward abutment connection, blanching the tissue slightly. And this patient's one of those guys that he didn't understand why he needed a final restoration. He was very happy with the provisional. We can see some time later, eight weeks later, that. that contours are, are, are nice. Uh, we've got thin tissue, so in retrospect on this case, as we'll see with the final restoration at three years, uh, I probably should have done a connective tissue uh, procedure at the time of implant placement, just a little tunnel approach, because uh, we'd lost about a half a millimeter on the facial, pro facial profile. Um, the complicating thing with this is that the dentist has got to take a direct impression, and unless you're working with someone that's going to be really careful with this, they can, they can play a role in that facial recession of tissue. And here, I think we have our final case. This is a, a great, no, there's two more. Here, here's a case that, again, looks at going to a final restoration. A college child that the parents are pressing things quickly, and because of a congenitally missing tooth, we've got extra tissue uh, that we can fortunately uh, help us out along this way of, of delivering um, a, a final restoration at the time of, of uncovering. Okay, so this is not something that we routinely do either, but a good example of where we were fortunate enough to, uh, to have enough tissue to work with in this regard. So the, the implant's placed at the appropriate chronoapical dimension, and we've got buccal bone that we needed to profile. Uh, so we want this, you know, the bone is even up close to the CEJ on our natural teeth. So we're going to apically position the implant and profile it uh, so that we can have a restoration emerge through both the hard and soft tissues in this case. Here's our, our natural tooth that's bonded to adjacent, and here's at phase two. From my surgical index, the restorative dentist has selected an abutment and created the final porcelain fused metal crown. And we just happen to be fortunate at six weeks, we've got pretty good uh, gingival heights on the, on the implant restoration that, that is um, puts it into perspective with the contralateral, lateral incisor, and some time later, uh, we've got good soft tissue maturation and an aesthetic result um, in, in a pretty, pretty unique situation where we're delivering a final restoration at the time of implant uncovering. And the last case, uh, periortho. I mentioned this at the beginning. This is a huge part of enabling us to do things better. We've got congenitally missing laterals that the orthodontist has done a wonderful job in creating adequate space. We have get our three-dimensional analysis in this case. It's going to tell us in cross-section to expect buccal fenestration, so we're going to be prepared to do some grafting at the time of implant placement. Here's our surgical guide directing us appropriately and our expected fenestrations that are grafted with a resorbable membrane and freeze-dried bone. Our surgical indexes that are the key to making our provisional restorations. Uh, our master cast to create our provisional restorations, and my very talented uh, Andrew Canterbury making provisionals. These are custom provisionals that uh, uh, not anybody can make. I mean, he does a wonderful job at using an inexpensive cylinder abutment and looting the emergence profile to the abutment and then having a cement retained provisional that's right at the gingival margin. So here we are at the day of implant uncovering. Uh, you can see before seating and then true seating of the restoration on the abutment, letting the tissues heal. Uh, and you do remember that this case started with no papilla. There's just a flat uh, profile of tissue uh, where those congenitally missing incisors are. Uh, again, healing around our pr provisional restorations. Uh, that's an inclusive view of the provisional restoration that's very uh, accessible to get cement 